What is low poly modeling and some helpful tips how to do it in SelfCAD? Hello everyone. In this video, I'll start here with an imported model that I got from Sketchfab. I'll put a link in the description if you want to get it. This is exactly how I got this model, uh, except actually I rotated, it came in hands up and I rotated sideways, but other than that, I haven't touched yet anything. Um, if you see this model, the main brilliance of this model is the amount of faces. They're relatively low, uh, that of. You can see it has only 782 faces, albeit this is not closed. You can see if I turn on my back face coloring, you can see this is not closed. Now I can close this in two ways. I can go to fill polygon and close them. So this will kind of, you know, just close this part. Or if I want to make it hollow, I can just go to add thickness. Uh, although I have to be careful to not to make it um, too much. It will start self intersecting. I have to be careful to make sure if I go like, let's say negative three or four or you without mirror thickness. Yeah, I don't need mirror thickness. But if you go, for example, negative uh, five, you will already start seeing they start coming out on the other side because there's not enough room inside to do it. So I would say to be safe, something like this is minus one. Yeah, maybe less. But uh, same thing positive. If I would do positive, let's say five, it will start closing up here. So yeah, so that's basically the only thing I would have to be careful here. But other than that, uh, this is a nice model and still it's you know a little more than 1500 faces um, if you think about surface based modeling to create something like this using surfaces and then triangulate them you'll end up having probably well over 100,000 faces so this is the main thing the requirements of low poly modeling where you basically get a draft of how it looks like and then you actually can um, make it look uh, much nicer, smoother in two ways. Uh, in many cases, you can just use smooth shader, something like this. If I turn around smooth shader, um, actually, oh, it was smooth before. Okay, so this looks relatively smooth. The other way is you can actually add more vertices to make it look smoother by just doing something like this. Let's say if I turn around something like this, three, that should be smooth enough. And then if I remove this and it looks much smoother as before, and here you can see actually one was too much, it sticks out here. So uh, this actually is not broken, I just have to kind of select these faces and push it a little bit in. Uh, but that's not, yeah, or, or just make less thickness or, you know, make it more thick enough to have room. But that's not the point of this tutorial. Um, so this is mainly the idea of low poly modeling. If you have a lot of games, a lot of stuff, sometimes they have different versions. They have a very low poly version uh, that shows when it's zoomed out, no one sees the difference. And then sometimes if you zoom in, then they load a higher poly and so on. So low poly modeling is still quite an important um, uh, requirement um, in, in uh, general 3D modeling. And in some cases, it's just the easiest way to do things. So to do these type of stuff, you kind of have to be an artist a little bit. You have to know exactly how to move. It's just moving points and so on. Um, I will show in the description um, from a SuvoCat, another one who did some nice videos for SelfCAD. Um, how actually he models something like this in SelfCAD. But for now, what I want to show here is, uh, and I'll maybe adding some other tutorials, SelfCAD's channel have actually quite a few low poly modeling tutorials, which um, some brilliant designers that I can never compete with what they do. I'm not a designer. Um, so I'll leave you uh, with um, uh, some uh, references in the description. But for now, what I want to show you here is some more technical concepts of what can help when it comes to low poly modeling. So let's first say over here, I'm going to take here, I'm going to add actually another segment here. So I'm going to do this. And let's say I want to use a hand start building out. And this is actually how this guy Musufa Cat is doing it. Um, he starts modeling something like this. Now, the problem here we're facing here is he's trying to basically using four fingers over here. He takes one finger extruding this. So basically taking like these two and extruding them and then kind of making a few extrusions and scaling and moving this type of stuff. And then he's doing four fingers from here. Okay. Now the problem here is that extrusion normally has something that it's cutting. So if I would go and extrude this, for example, all of this by default, let's say whatever, it doesn't matter what, no, what number I do it. And now if I, take these two faces, for example, and I try to move them or scale them, whatever I do, um, I will affect the adjacent faces because these are actually removing the inner faces because that's how it's supposed to be when you make it a manifold mesh. That's basically the idea of what you want to do. But when it comes to this, if you have to want to scale it and kind of get each finger separated and split, you need something else. 
So this is actually where Selfkit has this deal. I think his video is not showing it, so that's why I want to explain to you stuff. Uh, you have something that's called allow duplicate faces. If I do allow duplicate faces, you don't really see any difference. But actually what's happening here is if you see, I have over here by default called cut intersection is usually on. That's kind of cuts, which I've shown in my previous videos. It cuts when it intersects with something else. But part of it is also it removes everything else. It cleans up the topology. If I turn on allow duplicate faces, it will remove cut because this actually goes against what cut is doing. It will actually leave inside faces. So let me show you what this would be doing. Now I'm going to be using another tool in the scale where there's an option to scale. This is actually what he's doing in his video as well, using individual transformations. What I'm doing with individual transformations is that I say, I don't want to have the scale factor from each of them together the size. I just want to scale each one individually. And, and this is how I can split it off. So now, if I'm splitting this down, let's say using this, you can see now what's happening here is that we have faces over here in the side faces and actually inside also. So this is actually a problem. I want to have the inside face, but don't want to have this. So actually to make this work, I will have to get a new cube without that segment. I just wanted to show you what this is. So I don't want to have the height segment. So I have only this. And now I actually want to show you this actually is going to work in polygon as well, I think. If I select the entire polygon and now I go to extrusion and I add allow duplicates and I finalize it and I'll go to scale and I use individual transformations and now I can scale them down whatever number I need to scale them down and you can see we have this basically split which is the basis how to do it. So this is basically the idea of yeah, allow duplicates and how individual transformations can help with these type of stuff and then you can follow this video and see exactly how he's doing this type of stuff now what if i do need to have a split now so you saw i, I couldn't add a split before uh, otherwise i will have to do the way actually he does it in his video where he extrudes first one and then the other one so making sure that they don't cut in allow you to have duplicate faces otherwise it becomes difficult because the extrusion is meant to keep things manifold and it does not take into consideration that you later want to scale them so this is basically a lot of what will do but what if you do need to have a split maybe here you want to split out just a section and this is where the added details comes in if you go to add the details you have an option to add segments manually i think he's doing it later also in his video kind of like just adding segments so you can start moving or you can add in this case i want to add a loop you can add a complete loop so let's say if i do something like this now um, i need to find this loop so for example here i'm adding a loop and I think my previous interrupted loop. So if you have quads, it makes it easier to find the loop. But nevertheless, okay, so if I did, it's not always finding a loop in the entire thing, but over here, it does it for what I needed. Uh, so now I can go to face mode and I can, for example, select this face and extrude this, um, and this will work. So add the details is kind of a helper where you can manually add where you need. You cannot rely on kind of like resolution or these type of stuff because it's kind of like uniformly going to add to everything. So if you want to play with where you need exactly the segment or where you want to remove a segment, you can the same thing do add the entire segment and then go remove the segments over here. Uh, there's a lot of things you can do. So this is where the details comes in. So basically the idea here is that when it comes to low poly, you basically play with the polys. Uh, you kind of take a face, you move it, you stretch it, you scale it, and you do whatever needs to be done in order to make it work. Mm -hmm. And um, in most cases, you rotate. Um, in his case, for example, you rotate like this, and then you extrude again, and then again, and slowly start building out uh, things like that. Uh, and then if you want, for example, add over here the, the smoothness, um, I think he used manually move it up, but you can actually use it in flight. It wouldn't be as perfect, but just kind of the idea. You start inflating. So you can use all of these tools to start shaping uh, the shape, but I think things I've shown now here, allow duplicates is, is really, really helpful for many designs and same individual transformations. One other thing that actually he's doing on his video that I that is important to understand is the idea how you select, because when you do with these type of stuff, you often need to select um, a lot of pieces and to scale them. So there's two problems I want to show here. So one thing here is, let's say suppose I want to scale this entire loop over here. So obviously I can I can loop select over here in this case. I can go to um, vertex selection and loop select. And I should be able to loop select this entire loop. And then I can go actually did not select here. You see, it's not always selecting the entire because once you start going in here, it didn't really realize where the loop stops and it broke it. So 
it should, instead of selecting these two, it selected this. Um, yeah, there's other cases where it's even more difficult. Here also it's selected this. So you can start picking, but usually once <coughs> the more complex the object gets, the more difficult it will be to select complete loops. Um, so you need to select them manually. So how do I select this entire thing? So the first thing here is that if I turn on wireframe mode, then it acts like an X-ray mode. In some software you have something X-ray mode, uh, in self the wireframe mode acts as an X-ray mode. So now I can go something like this and select this entire thing. Okay. Now it selects the back and front everything. But as you can see here, I mean, I could be more careful and select only here, but still it's very difficult not to select the other side. And this is where it comes in the idea of using um, left to right or right to left. So normally when we loop select, I loop select from um, right to left. So if I loop select from right to left, it selects everything in the path, even if it's partially intersect. So you can see the center lines I'm trying to select is completely intersecting, but I have many other that is partially intersecting. This will select everything. If I do the same thing going from left to right, I can still intersect oh, here, will completely intersect. But let's say I go over here, I still intersect a lot of other stuff um, that are partially intersecting, but only these are completely intersecting. And in that case, it selected this entire loop, just this entire loop. So now if I want to, for example, scale this down, I can just go and start scaling this loop. And there's another thing where I can turn on uh, symmetry. For example, I want to scale it only in the red axis, this the x axis, but I want to use the gizmo to visualize it. But in this case, it will scale just one side. So, what if I want to scale it both sides? I can turn on my symmetry. In this case, I can kind of scale it in something like this. So, this is where this type of stuff comes in. So, um, well, uh, basically, what I'm showing here is some helper tools that comes out here. And actually, you've seen over here this edge over here was also completely intersected. So it didn't really help, but it didn't bother that I scaled it actually. But uh, but that's basically the idea. So this wireframe mode you'll use a lot in uh, low poly modeling, and you will also use a lot the direction from left to right. So in this case, you see you didn't select anything because nothing is completely intersected. And you will also use a lot the add the details tool. So in case you want to add, for example, I need to add a loop over here. Let's see if I can go to add the details and add the loop here. Um, and actually, I am. So you can see I can add the loop over here. And now we can start playing with this this type of stuff. Um, speaking about add the details, is also another thing that I want to show you that it works also based on selection. So for example, if I would be selecting these edges over here, and now if I enter add the details, um, I would be able to drag these selected edges. And now it's selected again, so I can kind of add loops only here. So normally, let me show you without this. So without this having selected, and if I enter to add the details, it will allow me to drag only one edge at a time. And now if I want to add a second edge over here, I have a problem. It would be very difficult because now I have to remove these triangles that I created. I cannot add this. So I can now go and, and maybe drag this in, make it over here. Now, once this add, you see, it doesn't allow me because intersect over here doesn't really make it uh, what I can do. So you see, it, it adds a lot of issues here. Um, I can actually technically draw it in. I can draw in this line here. And now once it's added, I can go remove this. I can also remove this. But it takes me a lot of effort to get it done this uh, proper way. But if I select this first and I do this, I can just go um, and drag them in as expected and without any issues. So it saves me a lot of time. There's a lot more I can talk about at the details, but this is the main idea. So uh, this is actually one of SelfCAD's um, main strong points. It comes to these type of stuff. You're not going to find, I think, any software that is easier than SelfCAD to make these low poly modeling. Combination between all of these advanced features and the uh, trans basic transformations, like individual transformations and LR duplicates, all this type of stuff. Um, and with the added details, uh, I think these other stuff, you can find them on Blender and, you know, more advanced software, you'll find these features, these possibilities. Uh, but also with this added details is really um, probably the best in self cat and really flexible how you can do them and definitely the easiest to use. So um, again, I'll link in the description a few, um, basically it's also called box modeling. It's polygon modeling or box modeling. Um, I will link a few videos uh, to see actual practice that you can practice on. Um, but yeah, if you use these tips that I've shown you, it uh, may actually be much easier than what you've seen in some of these videos. Um, okay, I hope this was helpful and let me know in the comments. Thank you, bye.